Good morning. God is great. All the time and all the time God is great. Welcome to First United Methodist Church's worship. And we know that some of you are listening in on the radio and some of you will be watching this on Premiere on YouTube or Facebook, but you are welcome. And today I am accompanied by Jessie Nelson. And so I'm so grateful to have her sharing her passion and love for music and some beautiful songs. Uh, we do also want to lift up that today is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of the gentlemen who have shaped our faith and our hope and our love. May you have a blessed day. And we're going to jump right into uh, today to our surprise sack. This is a First United Methodist Church tradition and ritual. In the summer, we have opportunity for young people to share things and to um, help to remind us what they, what they may represent that reminds us of God. And today, I hope you can see this. It is a beautiful bird. And Emma Cones shared this beautiful little bird and this is what she said it reminds her of the dove in Noah's Ark and she even made a really pretty picture for all of us and you know what Emma when I see this little bird one of the things that I immediately thought of when I saw it on my desk was I thought about the song his eye is on the sparrow and we know that God's eye is on every bird that flies in the air and for that we give thanks and praise so thank you so much Emma thank you for blessing us and let us pray almighty and gracious God we thank you that you watch over us we thank you that from that first dove on Noah's ark and to all of the birds we celebrate, and even Jesus sharing his story about, about how God's eye is on the sparrow and God cares for us. God, we remember that you are with us. So God, hear our prayers this day and speak into our hearts through word and through song. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Now, Jessie Nelson, the first song she's going to share today is a song that I heard after the first of the year. And as soon as I heard this song and I watched the video online, I immediately reached out to Jessie and I said, Jessie, this is a song that I want you to sing on Good Friday. Well, we all know that the pandemic happened and we didn't have that opportunity to hear that song then, but we do have an opportunity to hear this song in light of our scripture today. So welcome, Jesse. The next right thing from Frozen 2. I've seen dark before, but not like this. This is cold, this is empty, this is numb. The life I knew is over, the lights are out. Hello darkness, I'm ready to succumb. I follow you around, I always have. But you've gone to a place I cannot find. This grief has a gravity that pulls me down. But a tiny voice whispers in my mind. Can there be a day beyond this night? I don't know anymore what is true. I can't find my direction, I'm all alone. The only star that guided me was you. Do the next right thing. 
take a step, step again. It is all that I can to do. The next right thing. I won't look too far ahead. It's too much for me to take. But break it down to this next breath, this next step, this next choice is one that I can make. So I'll walk through this night, stumbling blindly toward the light, and do the next right thing. And with it done, what comes then? When it's clear that everything will never be the same again, then I'll make the choice to hear that voice and do the next right thing. Amen and amen. I would invite you to hear these words of Job chapter 10, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 22. And this is Job speaking. I loathe my very life, therefore I will give free rein to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness of my soul. I say to God, do not declare me guilty, but tell me what charges you have against me. Does it please you to oppress me, to spurn the work of your hands while you smile on the plans of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as a mortal sees? Are your days like those of a mortal or your years like those of a strong man, that you must search out my faults and probe after my sin? Though you know that I am not guilty and that no one can rescue me from your hand, your hands shaped me and made me. Will you now turn and destroy me? Remember that you molded me like clay. Will you now turn me to dust again? Why then did you bring me out of the womb? I wish I had died before any eye saw me. If only I had never come into being or had been carried straight from the womb to the grave. Are not my few days almost over? Turn away from me so that I can have a moment's joy before I go to the place of no return, to the land of gloom and utter darkness, to the land of deepest night, of utter darkness and disorder, where even the light is like darkness. May God add a blessing on the reading, hearing, and understanding of this holy word. Amen. And please join me in prayer. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. When something bad happens, you have three choices. You can either let it define you, let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you. Now today we hear these words in light of Job's story, and when we think of Job, we may immediately think about what it means to be patient in the midst of suffering. Now during the month of June, we are looking at Bible characters in the Old Testament who start with the letter J in the series, What Would J Do? We are thinking about the trials and challenges that they faced, and, and more importantly, how they responded to those trials and challenges. So Job is a great character witness for us to reflect upon. Now from Job chapter 1, the Lord says, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He's blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And thus the story begins. Satan proceeds to test Job. He loses his livestock and all of his children. He tear, tears his robe and he shaves his head. And yet he still would not sin by condemning God. And then Job becomes afflicted with sores. 
head-to-toe sores, and even though his wife tells him to curse God and die, he wouldn't sin by contemning God. Then Job's friends decide to sympathize with him and try to help him through his pain and suffering, and shortly after, Job speaks the words that we just heard. Now, remember the context. Job is part of the wisdom literature in our Bibles. There are 42 chapters in the book of Job. This morning and this evening, you are only hearing just a portion of the story from Pastor Joe and from myself. Now, we intentionally chose our passages, and we are wearing a black ribbon as a sign of mourning and grief for Job. And as Job's friends began to question what Job really did do to deserve his suffering, I wanted us to hear Job's raw response. Because in these verses, Job is getting frustrated and angry, and we hear that. His life has been reduced to utter despair. He had nothing left but his wife, his friends, and even his own life. And yet he was beginning to question whether his life mattered anymore. In our focus verses, Job wants a response from God. What did he do to deserve this condemnation? Job knew that he was not guilty of any sin, and yet he was suffering so. And so Job says, your hands shaped me and made me. Will you now turn and destroy me? Remember that you molded me like clay. You now turn me to dust again? Job wasn't at a place where he could understand how and why his life was even spared. He didn't see a purpose or understand God's big picture in his life. The despair that Job expresses in verses 18 through 22 is even more troubling, isn't it? Job wonders why he was even born. If God knew each and every day of his life, and if God held those days in the palm of God's hand, how could God allow this to happen? He even dares to ask, does God even understand what it's like to be a human being? And why couldn't Job just fade into the darkness of the night? Earlier in the prayer, Job just wanted to be left alone. If there was any way for God to stop his senseless suffering, then Job could just enjoy some joy. Or as one commentary stated, he could enjoy some light. Now, mental health providers would diagnose Job's despair as severe depression. He was in a place where he had no hope in his pain and suffering. And in between our focus verses, Job received so-called advice from those closest to him that were riddled with accusations about his true character and filled with bad theology, suggesting that God had caused this to happen to him, that God was punishing him. Yet this despair and depression goes far beyond his mental health. Job was physically, emotionally, financially, and even, and especially spiritually, in this dark place. You know, to me it's almost comical that when we think about Job's story, we lift up Job as an example of patience in the midst of suffering. Because there's nothing in our focus verse that demonstrates that concept at all. This is not how Job's story should be defined. Job Job is a story about a man who gets real with God. Job cries out to God and lets God know that he's suffering and hurting in the midst of trying to be faithful. Now, eventually Job is going to get to that place remembering that his very life was not destroyed. His story wasn't done yet. And eventually Job would get to that place of being strengthened through his story. But again, we're not there yet, are we? The truth is today that we admit that we've been in Job's place, haven't we? In times, we believe that not one more bad thing can happen and then the other shoe drops. And we get that Job feeling, don't we? The story of Job goes to that deep, dark place where humanity has to go. Why do bad things happen to good people? Tragedies happen every day. Bad things happen every day. As God's people seeking to be faithful, we scratch our heads, don't we? 
We ask, why? We cry out, why? And we even beg God, why? And then there is silence. And then there is waiting. And there's even waiting in the silence and silence in the waiting. And it's hard. Yet as we consider our servant Job, we're invited to think about what kind of God do we look for to help us? We may turn to those images from our Sunday school days, those images of God being all-powerful and all-knowing, a God that is steadfast and a God who is able to do the impossible. But like Job, we then turn from that question to another What kind of God do we need? Job will find this at the end of his journey through his trial and suffering. These are great questions for us, though. And again, when when something bad happens, you have three choices. You can either let it define you, you can let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you. We don't have to be defined by the bad things that happen to us, yet our stories and our scars do shape our identity, and honestly, they can make us bitter or better. I have to tell you that as soon as summer hits and my ankles are bare, I see the scar on my right ankle. It's a scar that I received in the moving process to Columbus. And after six years, that scar still reminds me to be careful around sharp objects. And even though it is healed, it's still there to remind me of that moment of pain. And Lord have mercy, I have plenty more scars where that came from. And some of them are visible and some of those are not visible. You too have scars and memories that are painful and have shaped your identity. So how has God helped you to define yourself in spite of those things? We all know people who face bad situations and are nearly destroyed by those experiences. They easily fall into that pit of despair and struggle to find a way out. In the Simon and Garfunkel song, The Sound of Silence, the lyrics say, Hello, darkness, my old friend. We may hear those words and relate, yet darkness can so easily destroy one's focus. On this side of the cross, we claim the light that shines in the darkness. We claim the light of Christ to shatter the darkness and to reveal God's grace and love. We have this benefit. So how has God helped you to keep from utter destruction? And in Job's story, it was going to take a long time for him to experience that light of grace and love. And when he did, he was able to experience mental, emotional, physical, financial, and especially spiritual healing. That strength that he once experienced in relationship with God was restored. Yet remember that we aren't there yet in the story. In our own stories, think about all of the ways that your experiences have, have strengthened you. Whether it is finding that inner strength or whether it is finding strength in those around you, How has God helped you to find that strength again? Now, by no means is this one message able to address all of the pain and suffering, the tragedies, injustices, diseases, and pandemics in this world. Yet Job's story reminds us that even when he didn't see it, God was right there. God heard every word of Job's despair and anger. And we can be certain that God knows our hearts, that God's light will shine upon us, and God's love will surround us always. Amen. Again, we want to wish a happy Father's Day to those men in our lives that have shaped our faith and our hope and our love. We also want to extend a happy birthday to all who will be celebrating this next week, and we continue to wish a happy anniversary to all of our June couples celebrating their years of faith and hope and love. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious Lord, there are moments that we find ourselves weary. We are weary from the news, we are weary from our fears and doubts, and we are weary from the extra work that it takes to try not to be weary. 
Together, let us pray for our fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, brothers, uncles, sons, nephews, cousins, and colleagues, all of those guys in our lives that make us who we are. And we pray for our church family now scattered through our community, tuning in and worshiping in the comfort of living rooms. And we pray for strength. We pray for our community facing the reopening with ever-changing directed health measures. We pray for health and protection. We pray for our nation being torn apart by so many issues and injustices. We pray for peace. Then we pray for our world, our entire world facing the pandemic and learning new ways of being and doing. We pray for healing and we pray for hope. And with the confidence of the children of God, we pray together the words Jesus taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, I want to welcome Jessie Nelson as she sings Mistakes.
would you receive our benediction? WWJD, what would Job do? You know, Job would do the next right thing, and he would remember God's love and light and grace are right there for him. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you.